Hey, anatomy and physiology students. Welcome to our video on muscle histology. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the three basic types of muscle. So there are three basic types of muscle. If you recall from lecture, the three basic types of muscle are skeletal muscle, which is actually the one that we've got right here. Skeletal muscle attaches to your bones generally, it moves your limbs, moves your body. It is a voluntary type of muscle. Now there's also cardiac muscle, which as its name implies is going to be found in your heart. Nowhere else. It is an involuntary type of muscle. The third type is smooth muscle which is generally found in the walls of hollow organs. Think like arteries, veins, um, intestines, fallopian tubes, uterine tubes. Those are actually the same thing. Uh, urethra, ureters, all those good things. So these are our basic three types of muscle. So we got one voluntary and two involuntary. We're going to start by looking at skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is actually what we've got here. All right, we are looking at skeletal muscle. This, if I draw a little bracket right here, this is one skeletal muscle cell. This is another skeletal muscle cell. There's another one down here. Those are the skeletal muscle cells are running horizontally here, okay? They're going across on our page. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I actually have six and then a little piece of some more above and below. Skeletal muscle cells are also called skeletal muscle fibers because they are generally long and skinny. Now, there are a couple important things we got to notice about them. First of all, they're long and skinny. How do they get so long? Well, they get so long because there are these embryonic cells in the embryo, that's why they're embryonic, there are some embryonic cells that are called myoblasts. And these myoblasts fuse together to make skeletal muscle fibers or cells. Now, because individual cells are fusing together to make a bigger cell, I'm going to notice that in this one skeletal muscle fiber, where I'm putting all these arrows, it has a lot of nuclei. We, I mean, I can see four or five right there alone, and there are more to the left and to the right. So our skeletal muscle cells, skeletal muscle fibers, in other words, are multinucleate. And this is a consequence of their embryonic development. All right, what else can we notice here besides the multinuclear nature of these cells? We can also see that there are striations. So if I look again, I like this this guy right here. Oh, I should switch to my arrow if I want to do an arrow. There we go. So dark pink followed by light pink followed by dark pink and light pink and dark pink and light pink and dark pink. Now these are known as striations. These are called striations. And we have this pattern because there are contractile proteins. Actin is one. Myosin is the other one. And they have this overlapping pattern that creates these striations. And these proteins act in myosin, they're contractile, and they let the muscle cell contract, let it shorten powerfully. All right, that being said, that's pretty much it for, for this guy. Let's keep going here. I have another one here. What I want you to do is pause this video and see if you can find out well, how many muscle cells are here. Can you see their nuclei? How many nuclei do you see per cell? And can you see the striations? So do that, pause the video and totally do that. And now I've switched to cardiac muscle. 
cardiac muscle, of course, is in the heart. It's going to be in the walls of your atria and ventricles. When it contracts, it is going to generate the force that moves blood. Now, there are a lot of cardiac muscle cells here, okay? A lot of cardiac muscle cells. And it's worth mentioning that cardiac muscle cells are uninucleate. So when I see a nucleus in this, like this guy right here, that nucleus belongs to one muscle cell, and that muscle cell probably does not have any other nucleus. Here's another one, another one. I do see some connective tissue nuclei in here as well, but the big round guys are my cardiac muscle cell nuclei. All right, well, what else do I see? I am going to see striations. There are striations in here. They're not as like awesomely beautiful as a skeletal muscle, but they're still there. And they are overlapping actin and myosin proteins. Now, the other thing that I can see, which is really cool and is unique for cardiac muscle, check out that line right there. There's one right there. Some down here. There's a lot, actually. You can see a lot of these. These guys are my intercalated discs. Intercalated discs are going to join cardiac muscle cells. And they're going to join them electrically because they've got gap junctions. And this lets my cardiac muscle cells work together as a big coordinated unit. Now, these intercalated discs also join my cardiac muscle cells mechanically because they got desmosomes. And this ensures that the cardiac muscle cells are firmly attached to one another. All right. We keep going here. Pause this video. This is cardiac muscle. See if you can find striations, nuclei, and intercalated discs. And now we're looking at our final type of muscle. Our final type of muscle is smooth muscle, which we said we find in hollow organs. And the smooth muscle, it actually looks kind of different here. Smooth muscle on this side over here is cut longitudinally, while on this side over here is cut transversely. So you're seeing kind of like long axis smooth muscle cells right here, and you're seeing them cut into little tubes right here. Now, smooth muscle cells are going to be uninucleate. They are going to be involuntary like cardiac muscle was. And one other key thing about smooth muscle cells is the reason why they're called smooth. They're called smooth because there are no striations. There are no striations in here. There are still contractile proteins, but they don't have this overlapping pattern like we saw in skeletal and cardiac muscle. All right, good stuff. We got longitudinal and transverse smooth muscle here. And I want you to look at this final picture, see if you can find the smooth muscle. You should see longitudinally cut smooth muscle and transversely cut smooth muscle here. You should be able to see their nuclei, and you should not, of course, see any striations. All right, I'll see you guys next time.